The Mavic Hero Show is supposed to be a two-way conversation, so let's get that two-way conversation really started. And so in this video, I just want to dive into the comment section on episode number two of the Matt McKeever Show and discuss with you some of the better, more poignant comments and some of my responses to them just to really help foster and highlight for you some of the fantastic conversations there that are going on in that comment section. And so in particular, by far the most popular article, the most popular subject matter that we talked about in episode number two was rent crisis and a real estate crash. And so let's just get into it. Let's, let's discuss what some of you were wondering about. So first I have a comment here from Larry Preto. And so Matt, how is it possible that rents continue to appreciate if household income is decreasing? Who will be able to pay these rents? There has to be an end point. Technological advancements and massive government debts will make it more difficult to keep a job and tax increases are the government's means to continue servicing their debt. This gravy train cannot continue and there has to be a significant correction or even a recession slash depression. I hate sounding negative, but this is what I think is coming within the next few years. Please prove me wrong. Um, so then we had Dirty Burger jumping in there with his opinion and I think he had some great examples. And Dirty Burger brought up a great point in relation to car loans. And what he specifically brought up was the fact that look at car loans. You know, a while ago, a car loan just didn't even exist. Then it was only like three or five year car loans. Now it's eight or even 10 year car loans are occurring. And so that's just one way that our, our relationship with an asset changes. And so I think it was Dirty Burger as well that went on to, you know, post or hypothesize that potentially you know, maybe people will just stop owning homes. And in fact, that's something I've heard about in Europe, this idea that people end up only paying the interest and that a mortgage is truly that, that death loan, that loan until death. I'm not saying that's my opinion, but I just thought it was a great framing of the problem under a different lens because often we just assume that what we experienced in the past has to be what we'll experience in the future. And while usually the past is the best indicator, it's really the only it's the only historical data, it's the only data we got to use. We don't got data from the future, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that things will always progress the same as they have in the past. My response to Larry specifically was, Hi Larry, I mentioned briefly in the video that it looked like the US could be entering a plateau for rent prices, and I wouldn't be shocked to learn that in Canada either. What I was trying to highlight though is people prioritize shelter over a lot of other spending categories and need shelter, and an argument can be made that it's a spending category even more important in climates like Ontario or most of Canada. Overall though, I think if you're investing in rental properties to meet the 1% rule and you have a 20% or more equity, I think you can weather most economic climates. Because in my opinion, rent won't significantly decrease in most markets based on what we've historically experienced. As well, because I don't see deflation ever happening, borrowing now and paying with future dollars, presumably less due to inflation investment vehicles like real estate are attractive. So first of all, I probably shouldn't have said I don't see deflation ever happening. But what I meant to say was, or what I probably should have said was, you know, I see deflation as being a much lower risk than things like stagflation or in particular inflation. And so we could probably do a whole video on that subject matter. I'm not going to dive into it, but what I was trying to make with that point simply was that borrowing in today's dollars, if today's dollars are worth more than tomorrow's dollars because of inflation, you know, borrowing in today's dollars and paying off with tomorrow's dollars usually works out to be a smart financial move in a inflationary environment, simply because your dollars lose purchasing power with each day, with each year as it progresses. So that's also something to be aware of when you're looking at potentially an increasing interest rate. Now, you know, some other people jumped in the comments with much more specific examples of stagflation. And honestly, I think stagflation is probably one of the more realistic, reasonable concerns a person could have. I don't want to devalue that, but without really getting deep into that whole concept, um, but you could look to, you know, what the Japanese economy experienced uh, for several decades, essentially now at this point, as an example of stagflation. So it definitely is something to be aware of. However, I think that our situation here in North America and Canada in particular is, is quite different than what the Japanese economy experienced in the 80s, 90s and all that stuff. But again, just my opinion, I'd love to get your perspective. So jump in the comment section on this video or any video and share away because sharing is caring. So another comment I want to share with you was from Michael Rosehart. You may be familiar, Michael does his own YouTube thing and he's also my co-host on videos like 
Mike and Matt smash or pass or Mike and Matt on fire. Mike stated, the real risk is interest rate rises. Most rental properties don't cash flow at eight or 9% interest rates at 80 to 90% loan to value. Many landlords made no income at all in the 80s, 90s and early 2000s before rates came down. Flat rents, but rising costs equal no cash flow, question mark. So first thing first, I would question what, what's meant by many landlords, Michael? Um, many landlords made no income. I can make the claim many landlords made income. It, it's kind of fuzzy there. Um, but Mike goes on to say, what are your thoughts on real estate prices and cash flow with 9% interest rates? 1% increase in rates should lead to 4 to 8% in property value plus huge drops in cash flow. Since we can't fix in over 30 years like the US, what is a real estate investor to do in higher interest rate environments? I'm not saying it's likely for us to see double digit interest rates, but it's possible. Interest in your perspective, I have my thoughts. So I responded to Michael with uh, a pretty in-depth comment. Um, but even before I say that, I think one thing just be aware of is this scenario I'm laying out for you guys is not a scenario I necessarily think is likely to happen, but I just wanted to fully flesh out the idea or scenario that Michael had presented. So if, and this is a big if, if an investor believes there's a high probability of that happening, they should appropriately factor that into their analysis of future real estate deals. For example, if they believed it likely that a 5% interest rate increase could occur, I'd expect that they'd have one of their search criteria be for every 100,000 worth of property they borrow at 80% loan to value, they'd want it to cash flow per month approximately $333. That's 80K times 0 0.05 divided by 12. So essentially, I'm just looking at if interest rates were to say increase uh, by 5% tomorrow, what's going to be the immediate impact? The immediate impact would essentially be like $333 per month for each $100,000 of property you own at an 80% loan to value. The real question becomes, can they get rent of equal all expenses plus mortgage payments plus 333 minimum so that they'd be break even cash flow wise? So if they can acquire a unit at say 100,000 basis, can they rent it out for expenses plus assuming mortgage of 450 because that's 80,000 at that 4% plus 333. So if they're at 1% rule for rents, that's $1,000 minus 450 minus 333, which equals 217 for all expenses. That's likely too tight even if tenants are paying all utilities, insurance and property taxes plus any maintenance or vacancy reserve would likely, likely exceed it. That's in reference to this 217. So at 1.25% rule, they'd be renting it for 1250, adding another 250, which likely gets the property into their criteria, assuming of course they don't expect significant future rent price decreases. So essentially what I was trying to just lay out there is if you think that there's a major risk of interest rates increasing, rather than saying real estate's a bad investment, you should simply be adjusting your criteria of what makes for a good real estate investment. So if you think that it's realistic that interest rates could rise by 5% in say the next couple of years, you should be factoring that into your calculations and your future cash flow projections. And one of the key metrics you want from your property is cash flow or at least to be break even, you need to factor in those higher interest rates. It just is. Let's get into kind of my personal thoughts. So my personal overall thought is this, if we were to experience a dramatic increase in the interest rate environment, 5% over any short period of time, say a few years, then my real estate portfolio would be the least of my worries. Think about the impact that would have on the bond market, the stock market, international trade, and sovereign debt. Listen, a 5% in increase in interest rates, nobody, no real estate investor is gonna be extremely excited about that, or very few are at least. But that, that's not, it's, interest rates don't just impact the real estate market. If all of a sudden interest rates increase by 5% on mortgages and on all debt, that's going to dramatically impact the stock market, the bond market, sovereign debt, which is like, you know, individual countries debt. It's going to impact international trade. It would, it would dramatically change a lot of things. Presumably, in particular, if Canada was to experience a 5% increase in interest rates, that would either mean we need to have decoupled from the interest rates that the U.S. has, or the U.S. would have had to move lock, stock, and barrel with us up that 5%. Either way, that's going to create, again, some dramatic changes in the investment and economic climate of the day. And what I'm really trying to get at is, a lot of these gloom and doom worst case scenarios that most people present to me, usually like I look at it and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'd be 
in that doom and gloom scenario. But so would stock investors, so would like people with jobs that depend on jobs because what do you think is going to happen to employment if suddenly interest rates just like doubled or tripled overnight? Uh, because in order to grow, most companies are going to have to borrow capital and if they have to borrow capital at a higher rate, it means they need a higher internal rate of return. It's going to cause, it's going to be dramatic guys is what I'm saying. So the key is you need to separate black swan events from high probability events to occur. In fact, I've been recently sharing with you guys that I love the Masters of Scale podcast and on one of their episodes, uh, they discussed something along the lines of the idea of let it burn. And so the idea of let it burn was all these like small problems or these problems that could be major problems but have a very low probability of existing, you know, don't stress about it. And so for example, I think it's Reid Hoffman, the host of it, who was one of the founders of LinkedIn, discusses how for years, for years, LinkedIn didn't have a full backup system. So had the service crash, they could have like backed up parts of the data, but they wouldn't have had the full recovery. It probably would dramatically impacted their growth projections or destroyed them as a business. But if you look at it, if that probability of that happening on any given day is like 0.00001% per day, you know, letting that lapse for another 30 days isn't nearly as risky as your first reaction might be. You might be like, that's the end of the world type of event. Yeah, it technically is. But if that's not likely to happen, are you really going to stress about it? It's the sort of thing you need to prepare for worst case scenarios that are likely to occur. You can't prepare for every single worst case scenario or you'll spend your entire life just thinking up of crazy scenarios that you need to prepare for. Finally, just kind of finishing up the comment I had, I in part believe that the reason we have the low interest rate environment is due to the free flow of information, the internet create more efficient markets, the relatively free trade of goods and services between countries, the trend towards globalization and industrialization. I think most economies as they mature would move towards a low interest rate environment. Since the 1820s, we've been on an unprecedented growth cycle, reminiscent of Persia, Rome, Greece. The only likely cause I see that would catastrophically impact the real estate market over an extended period of time, say greater than five to 10 years, would be a dramatic shift culturally, socially, or a complete implosion of society. In that case, if everyone's going to lose everything, I'd rather lose a lot than a little. And so that's what I'm trying to come down to. And some of these worst case scenarios that people present to me, those worst case scenarios, essentially the way I view it is, okay, worst case scenarios, I lose everything, but it turns out a bunch of other people are losing a bunch of their money too. Sure, it would suck to go from a giant real estate portfolio to zero, but I'd rather go from having a lot to nothing than go from having very little to nothing. If that makes sense? Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Jump in the comment section down below. Let me know, did that make sense? Or am I just rambling on like an incoherent fool? I would really appreciate your perspective on the subject matter as well. Just let me know, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think, is it likely that we're going to experience that 5% increase in interest rates that Michael Rosehart hypothesized for us? You know, in the scenarios, it either happens very slowly, in which case I and the rest of the economy adjust, or it happens dramatically, in which case I and a lot of the rest of the economy get dramatically impacted. And again, it's one of those things, I just, when I actually look at the fragility of my situation in those scenarios, the only times I seem to find myself being fragile is when a lot of us are fragile. So I guess that's what gives me comfort, is knowing that if I lose everything, a lot of you guys are gonna lose your shit too. And so we're all gonna be starting over at zero again. And I'd rather start at over at zero having learned and done a lot of things than having not. So. That's my opinion on it. Again, I'd love to hear yours though. If you're enjoying the Matt McKeever show in general though, give me some feedback, share, share away too. Don't be afraid to share this. Sharing is caring guys. It's the only way I get new subscribers. So in particular, if you can share this on Facebook or Reddit, that would make my day. It would mean the world to me. And if you're not going to share it on Facebook or Reddit, tell me why. Tell me in that comment section down below. Matt, your shit shit. I don't even know why I watch it. So I'm not going to share it. Oh, okay, that, that at least is feedback. If you could be a little bit more positive, I guess, than that, that example I'll give you, would be like, Matt, you're shit shit. If you talked about this subject matter, then I would share it. Boom, I'll probably talk about that subject matter because sharing means that much to me. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you like this video, if you like what I'm trying to do with my channel, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, it's right down there if you're enjoying these videos. And until next time, remember, 
Making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point, guys? Thanks.